Hello and welcome back to the class. In this class, we'll be discussing about the stages of construction, in which the very first part is substructure construction, basically our footing and plinth levels and everything. Then part two will be superstructure construction, basically our beam, column, slab, and now staircase and everything. All right. Now before we start with the topic of substructure construction, I would like to discuss these two caveats with you, uh, so that we are on the same page, and then we'll start with the proper discussion. So the caveats are this. Okay, the drawing that I'm about to show you are based on the company standard called as Nasu Constructions, right? So they have their own standard which they have followed for these drawings also. Okay, each company has their own standards. Some companies tend to provide additional amount of information, all right? This so other that it can be followed properly on the site. It depends on company to company. The second uh, point is this: the construction is done as per the Indian conditions. So what do I mean by this? Is the project that we are about to show you was constructed in Bangalore. So we have got fantastic soil here in Bangalore, and our G plus two structure that we have. It was constructed at the depth of 1.5 meters. All right, that may not be the case for your site condition. Okay, it varies. Now, if you have black cotton soil, then instead of going for isolated footing, you might have to go for a combined footing even for a G plus two structure. So you have to get your uh, soil tested, and only then you can go ahead with the uh, you know deciding of the footing sizes and everything. All right. So with that being said, let's get started. So as I said, we have two stages of construction. One is substructure construction. And the other is super such a construction. Now I'm not gonna waste a lot of time in the you know PPT and everything because I I rather show it to you in SketchUp and with the site videos. But I like to show you the kind of steps that we have to follow whenever you're getting your project executed. So the very first step is clearing of site. So if you have an existing project over there or if you have a lot of grass or overgrown trees and everything, you have to clear all of it out. Okay, the very first step is clearing of site. After the clearing is done, the next step is. Marking on site. What are you gonna mark? You're gonna mark grids, columns, and footings. Now, why are you gonna mark this? Because we have to do our excavation work. How do you start excavation without any reference point? That is not possible, right? So, for doing the excavation, you need to have at least some amount of reference. This reference is nothing but your grids. Okay. So, you have to mark your grids. Based on grids, you mark your columns and footing sizes on the site. Once the excavation is done and everything, you will do your PCC work. Uh, after the PCC work is done, you have to mark your column again on top of the PCC. I'll show you everything. Don't worry. So after you're marking your column is done, you'll place your uh, footing mesh and your uh, column uh, cage. After they are placed, you'll do your concreting. Then you start marking uh, your column again on the top of the footing so that you can uh, erect your columns, neck columns, and everything. So once all of that is done, you'll do your backfilling, compaction, and everything. Then you'll place your SSM, size stone masonry, and then you go for plinth concreting. Now you don't have to understand everything with what I have said, okay? Because we'll be discussing each and every point in detail. I just wanted to understand. That these are the approximate twelve steps that we have to follow when we are doing our substructure construction. That is the only prerequisite for this video that you have to understand. That these are the twelve steps. Okay, one by one, I'll show you all of this on the side how it was carried out so that you can have a better understanding. Okay, so clearing of site is self-explanatory, right? We have to just go, we have to just remove all the trees, all the debris, and everything as much as possible. Remove it off, clean it off. Okay, it should be clean enough that you can mark your grids. That is a prerequisite. So with that being said, I'll show you the files now. Okay, so if I'll I'll go over here. So this is the project that we have here. All right, it's a proper G plus two project. But in what we have in the ground floor, we have a parking. They initially had a plan of constructing a one BHK at the bottom, but then uh, later on they said no to it. So in the ground floor, we have complete open area. Okay, so yeah, you will come and park your vehicles over here, and then you will take the staircase and you will come to the first floor. Okay, then the first floor, second floor is basically our duplex. So you will come over here. The same staircase will follow till over here. Then you have living room over here. After living room, you have dining hall. You have a kitchen, and you have one uh, bedroom with a attached washroom. Okay, so this is basically a one BHK. Then you go up. As soon as you go up, we have one bedroom over here with attached bathroom, and then one more bedroom here with another attached bathroom. Okay, so basically what we have here is we have a three BHK in a duplex. All right. So I hope you have understood how the situation goes. In the in ground floor, we have complete parking area. Then first and second floor, we have a duplex with three BHK. After which you will just take this uh, st uh, steps, and we'll come to the terrace region. So it's simple, gibless to structure. All right. I'll show you the footing details now. So as soon as you open up footing details, you can see there is so much of information given here. Right. We have given you a standard uh, representation of how the footing will look on the site. Okay. And then we have given you all the schedule for the footing. What kind of uh, length, breadth, and depth it has, and how how many uh, like you know what is the distance of shorter bars, and what is the thickness of the longer bars. All this information is provided. So if you see this drawing to begin with, you can see there is so much of information here. There is a grid to grid spacing. There is total length of the footing. Sorry, length of the plot. Then we have got the footing sizes. Then we have got the offsets from the column. So if you see here, 
you might feel a bit overwhelmed why there is so much information over here okay so instead of looking at this you should look at the site plan first okay in the site plan we'll get a proper idea of what is my site size like if you see here that's a 30 feet cross 40 feet is my site size in which what we have done we have left 1 feet 6 inches of our offset why do we leave offset for the ventilation purposes okay if you start uh, you know building all your houses next to each other all right you won't have any windows so there will be no uh, there will be poor circulation of air all right to make sure that we have good air circulation we leave at least uh, at least 2 feet minimum we have to leave at least 1 162 feet of spacing so that we can open our windows and everything that is the first reason and second reason is our water lines and our sanitary pipelines all of them will go parallel to the wall okay whatever walls we have on those walls only we'll run our uh, sanitary and water pipelines and everything okay so those pipelines will come over here then we'll have chambers here okay through those chambers it will pass and it will connect to the main uh, waste line on the road side we have to get permissions for all of that so once this is done so we understood that we have give 30 feet over here 40 feet over here and we have given our back space over here and everything come to the main plan so our plot instead of being 30 feet cross 40 feet is actually how much it is actually 27 feet by 37 feet 6 inches okay when it comes to footing we can easily acquire the additional space also no problem but when it comes to columns and beams and everything your plot is basically 27 feet and 37 feet 6 inches okay so please understand this so this is 30 feet 40 feet that is what we have here right we have 30 feet and 40 feet and then we have got our columns if you see columns how do column look they look like this okay so if you see we have got what type of footings we have got this is normal isolated footing eccentric footing eccentric footing all the sides we have got eccentric footings only okay here when we have got normal footing so this was just me showing you the drawings and everything from next class on fourth we will start discussing all these drawings okay because this class is about drawing reading and construction so both of them have to go hand in hand i have all these uh, photos and videos also that i would like to share with you and i would like to explain how the process is being done on the site okay all right so with that being said i like to wind up this class see you guys in the next class thank you